Hi, I'm Stuart Griffiths. This is my exhibition Closer, the Phoenix Gallery in Brighton. Um, the images in the exhibition are uh, part of my personal project on returning veterans uh, coming back from the wars of Iraq and Afghanistan. And alongside this is the archive, uh, my Northern Ireland archive, which are uh, images that I took when I was a soldier patrol on the streets of Northern Ireland in the late 80s and early 1990s. How I met Craig was, I was on assignment doing um, a project on, well, I was actually doing a feature on, on, on gangs in Liverpool and the cab driver mentioned that his friend's son was badly injured in, in, a, in Iraq. And it started from there basically, the, uh, that, and I got in touch with Craig's father, I said, oh, you know, this, this taxi driver, um, mentioned, suggested I contact you, because obviously I was talking to the to taxi driver about the other work that I do, other than photographing uh, you know, gangs in Liverpool. So uh, it started from there really, and uh, I was quite fortunate to, to meet him when I did, because shortly after, all, a lot of newspapers were photographing him and all this, and he's quite a, you know, he's a celebrity around his area, which is great, because obviously the injury while he sustained was, was you know, he's, he, an RPG landed, he was on his chest, blew his plate away, and obviously blew his eyes out. And, uh, um, but I spent a, a good few hours with him, and uh, it was it was about um, you know, getting an interview and also doing the uh, the portrait. The pictures here, the pictures I've been taking in his mum's garden, and again, it was you know, getting the light out there, an extension cable, and all that. And uh, I really wanted to uh, do it in the garden because when he was injured, he was actually on top of a roof putting fire down on, you know, whoever was attacking the insurgency in Iraq. So I wanted to kind of convey that message within the images. Um, but also the reason why these, these images are, it's, it's a triptych. It's because I've got so many different uh, portraits of so many people that I've photographed. It. The exhibition could have turned into an exhibition, like an editorial exhibition of, of, of stuff that's been published. And uh, when I was working with Val Williams, she was very keen on, on Having an exhibition that created an experience rather than showing you know what I've what I've done, uh, so it was more about kind of conveying the feeling and looking at the, the three different um, images that are obviously taken on, on the same role, but they're all very different. It, it, it was about it was about that experience, about that kind of that sort of looking at it in a humanistic way rather than, than loads of different portraits dotted along here and there and uh, I was quite happy with that and when I shown these images to um, Val she was very excited about working with, with the triptych and obviously working with someone like her was, was very important for me and she obviously knows her stuff so uh, I took a lot of that on board and uh, yeah she had a lot to do with, with the editing and curating of this exhibition which is great for, for a photographer. Yeah, the total story I'm trying to tell um, is really, it, it all kind of came about with a friend of mine ringing me up and said, look, I've got all these letters because at the time I was getting gathering stuff together for, because an organisation was quite interested in making a book on the, the archive. So I was getting all the material together and uh, and he said, uh, you know, I kept all these letters, do you want me to, uh, do you want me to do you bring them? So he came and delivered them personally. and. Uh, and when I was um, sort of taking the work around, and then I was also uh, shown to Val Williams as well, she said, oh, we must include these because the drawings are really interesting. And I know they're not photography, but this was kind of part of the journey, if you like. And, uh, and the reason why I'm using them here was uh, we really wanted to keep people in the gallery for, for, as, for as long as possible, was, was one of the reasons but also kind of giving a, an understanding of why I did the other images you know it, that, that kind of journey and um, so the actual letters although it's like kind of putting your, your you know bearing your soul to everyone um, you know I was kind of told that you know now you've got this exhibition you know you, your life's an open book so I thought well you know why not let's go for it you know it's, it's you know I've got this opportunity I'm making the most of it so uh, so yeah, and, and how they came about here was they were going to be uh, originally put into into like sort of display cases, but we couldn't get the display cases we wanted. So uh, Val suggested that um, should we go and get some test xeroxes done. So we did, and 
I thought it was a great idea. And then when we blew some of these up to A0 size, I thought brilliant. And again, it, it, you know, it would have been nice to have the originals in nice frames and all that, and uh, you know, and UV protected things. But uh, a lot of the, the for the Open 2010 funding went for the main exhibition. This was something that was discussed, you know, at one of the many meetings we had. And uh, so I'm glad it, it's gone in the way it has, and, and also it's, it's preserved the original letters by putting the Xeroxes up as well. Yeah, when I was living at the Mission Hostels, uh, at Veterans Hostel, um, at the time of living there, obviously, was it was more of a matter of survival. I did some pictures of people in the bed spaces, things like that, much to what I did when I was a, a soldier in, in, in Northern Ireland. And um, I, uh, it was kind of 2003, and then I returned to, to work on a more considered approach, looking at uh, you know uh, more portraiture and looking at uh, the environment there. Because um, I think when you actually live with, within the confines of it, it's quite difficult. Even then, there were really difficult situations to photograph. They didn't want to be photographed. Even though I lived there, it was, it, was, it was quite difficult. So it was really about going back and building trust and things like that. And then, obviously, some of the people that lived there were, were very helpful. Obviously, there was one guy in particular, uh, James Gallagher, who's now, he's now, uh, he's now um, dead. He uh, was my kind of link man. You know, he introduced me to people. And it's only because he was like ex-airborne like myself. So again, it was that background that helped me get a lot um, and meet a lot. But uh, the picture of Jason, which is behind me, that was really the kind of end of that hostel work because when he went back to the hostel and his, you know, his head was like it is here and uh, they were just like, oh, well, just don't let the Stuart Griffiths back into this place ever again, you know. I mean, I don't know that for certain, but I kind of guess that feeling. But I haven't got a problem with that because if, if they wanted to get funny about it, you know, I, I you know, helped the police, you know, I saw the whole incident and I, you know, I was willing to go to court and press charges, do all that sort of uh, technicalities. Um, so really from that is when I started to work on the uh, injured veterans returning from Iraq and Afghanistan because uh, the initial thing was to just work on, on, a, on a project on the hostel, that was the idea, but again it's just like dealing with the kind of, you know, you know, people that call themselves colonels still and stuff like that, which, yeah, it's like, you know, like coming to a brick wall all the time, so uh, in a way I, I was quite, I found it quite daunting to, to think, well I don't know anyone, where am I going to go, I haven't got like a focus place to kind of concentrate on. They're all over the country. That at the same time was quite a liberating uh, experience and, and very exciting at the same time because it meant a lot of, you know, journeying on the road and, and actually quite uh, got into the solitude of the road, you know, and uh, it was there where I could think about what I was going to ask, what I was going to photograph and, and, and I could really get my thoughts together and, and really know uh, when, it, when I came to seeing them that, you know, I need to do this, I need to do that, and everything would be, you know, very slick and on the ball, and I wouldn't waste any time doing it. I picked these particular images, um, and this particular section, out of many other images, um, uh, purely because I wanted to convey that uh, family snapshot thing. Um, this, because, you know, obviously when I was a soldier in the, in the parachute regiment, it, well, it was uh, like being in a family. So, in terms of, 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 of the images, you know, they were the images that I took. They were really much about photographing the board and the, the banal of, 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 of military life. Um, and in terms of like action and all that sort of carry on, although the riots did happen, you know, it, I was too busy probably, you know, putting a baton gun to my shoulder and having corporals screaming in my ear, telling me to aim and shoot and all sorts of stuff. So. The pictures I wanted to depict really, if anything, they kind of resembled sort of Britishness to, um, you know, what was happening in Northern Ireland. So, uh, you know, so it, for me, I actually found it a very confusing place because, you know, like it, with house searches and stuff, you 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 boot front doors in and you'd be like raiding some uh, room that looked like your grandmother's, which is, you know, so different from from like places like Afghanistan and, uh, and Iraq because you know you are in a different world altogether, a different culture and all that, all that sort of thing. Whereas in Northern Ireland it's, it's a very similar culture, you know what people are saying. But at the same time it still was a very intimidating and scary place to be because you know all the time you thought 
something's going to happen, you know, this sniper's on the roofs, you know, because you'll be given briefs and, and all that before you used to go on patrol and you know about the immediate threats, etc, etc. So, although uh, in the pictures there, there's this kind of sense of calmness now, there was this underlining uh, um, tension running all the way through. Um, and I think also with the images, I want to sort of show, uh, you know, photographs and, 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 and uh, and show images of the army life that people would know not, wouldn't normally see, like looking at bed spaces, looking at fancy dress parties. Yeah, because the army is very much uh, projected very in, in a very controlled environment with, with the MOD. And I wanted to kind of go beyond that and kind of had some kind of you know make it a bit human. And uh, so that that was the aim in in, in, in how I presented these images. But so obviously, if you look at it into close detail, there's some quite dark things uh, which which are going on. But again, it's about you know asking questions within it. The individuals in this exhibition, um, how they actually feel about in in like troop, troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, right? Well, they're badly injured for a start. Some of these people, uh, but I myself. I, I'm not really there to sort of kind of question politicians and all that really, but I've kind of gone beyond that really, I feel personally. Um, I, I hope this work does get recognised and, and it, it questions people's, uh, you know, subconscious. Uh, that, that's something I want to do. And, and also, it, it's good to kind of do something where it's, it is recognised in, in the exhibition space and, you know, in the art world, I, I'm hoping, because there you can really talk about things in more detail. I, I just feel from, from past experience we working in the editorial market, it's, it's been a, a lot of constraints and a lot of politics to deal with. And within this environment, I'm more freer to, to express you know, the, the way I feel and, and, and the people in the pictures. Um, their, their opinion probably would be, you know, they didn't agree with the war, but you know, they really love the regiment that we're in. That's a lot of the answers that they will give. So, where it goes from here is is will be very interesting because all the time I'm always thinking, what's next? You know, it's uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever 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 have any help from from the MOD, but I don't want any help from them. I don't. It's not it's not really my thing. You know, I, I don't need to be involved with uh, you know Parliament and all that sort of stuff. It's just it's just not it's just not my thing. Yeah, you know, I, I that's why I got out of the army because I wanted to free myself from. from bureaucratic uh, you know people and stuff so uh, so where it would go from here um, I hope it finds a home and it keeps going actually to be honest I mean some of the work here I want to respond to as a photographer that is most definitely the the case but I've got no real kind of desires to sort of you know get myself embedded with the British Army in, in, in Afghanistan that again does not interest me because it's again controlled by you know, the, the powers of, uh, at B and all that sort of carry on. And I'm always looking to, to, to do my own interpretation. And uh, so, really, it's a question of, uh, yeah, the question is uh, sort of, is now. And, and, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, looking very optimistic uh, about the future. But to have it here is, is a fantastic start.